Oh, 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 sorry. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? That's good. Uh, before I go any further, um, how many? Uh, how many? Okay, a few. Oh, a lot. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, usually uh, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, why do people even? Uh, okay. Uh, I. Uh, you guys like? Uh, you like ventriloquism? Yeah. All right, let's do a little ventriloquism for you. Um, so, how's it going? How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. So, things are going pretty good for you. Things are going well, pretty well. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm feeling kind of low. Oh, really? What's the matter? Parking no. or uh, the weather's no. weird or a girlfriend problem? No. Haircut? No, my batteries are wearing out. <laughs> That's horrible. That's a horrible no, joke. I'm, good. I'm putting no, you in the pocket. But, but, no. Yeah, no. I'm putting you in the pocket. No, don't put me in the pocket. Don't put me in the pocket. No. Mm. All right. Uh, okay, shut up. Um, it's great to be here. Um, I'm going to thank a few people right now. Um, Bill. Wow, you read that correctly. There is no Bill. That's so funny that you laughed at that. Um, you guys are easy. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, well, Lindsay for doing the thing. Uh, ben, Ian, Josh, Rennie, Brad, and Dustin running the sound for us. Let's hear it for Dustin. Um, it's pretty exciting. This is a, kind of a weird thing for me. Um, having, having gigantic, having gig, oh, I'm sorry. Hello? Yeah. No, not a, not a good time. Not a good time. No, I, what? No, no, I can't. It, the Contemporary Jewish Museum. Yeah, I'm, I'm inside. I'm performing. We, I got to go. Yeah, there's big pictures of me. Yeah. No, it's art. No, it's art. It's art. You have to, you have to see them. Look, I gotta go. It's not a good. I gotta. It's not a good. It's not a good time at all. Okay, what? Yeah, that is a good mustard. Look at. Look, I gotta have to go. It's not a good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay. Beep. Oh, I got call waiting. Yeah. No, they still have it. Beep. Yeah, I gotta go. All right. All right, goodbye, Mom. Okay. Um, you guys, uh, by the way, I'm doing two hours. And I have another great story about Abraham, so let's try to stay here. Um, <laughs> all right, I shouldn't be laughing. Okay. Um, do you guys like uh, you like magic? All right, let's do a little, do a little magic for you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, any questions about that art so far? We had a little couple of, ah. Um, okay. Pretty great room. I think it does everything. They got the angles off, but OK. That's the lighting right there, right? OK. Hey, all right, how's it going? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I now present It's all timing. It's all comedy time. Oh, no, no. How about just one, one big one, just one? OK. You got to do it, though. It's very stupid. Go. OK. Um, all right, one more thing. Um, this thing's about 45 minutes long. Kidding. It's not funny anymore. OK. Um, I'm going to take everybody to uh, Disney World in the future to the uh, Comedy Pavilion. Um, and this is kind of how I see what's happening. It might happen in the future. Okay. So let's, I'll take you there now. Hit it. Play the cue.
As you know, by the year 2021, everyone on the planet owned a device called the iProd. The iProd attached itself to the occipital lobe of the brain, allowing their owners to experience everything. Television, movies, music, telephone conversations, all without the use of external devices. People forgot what live comedy was. But the iPod was outlawed by our leader in 2025, and people had to be retaught how to laugh out loud again. And only one man could take on that job. That man was this man. Hey, how you doing? Where you from, sir? Hey, let me make you feel at home. Moo! Moo! <laughs> uh, men and women are different, aren't they? They have different sexual organs. Have you noticed that X-rated movie titles are parodies of real movies? Hey, where'd you get that shirt? A store? <laughs> uh, you know, these things are just some of the things people used to laugh at. Lines that you may have heard from me. Hacky Shekerstein. You may remember me from the Hall of Presidents. Now disassembled because of our new dictatorship. Four score and hello, I'm Abraham Lincoln. Sometimes I had a beard. Sometimes I didn't have a beard. Mary Todd, uh, who was a real whack job, liked the beard because it covered the hideous wart I had on my face. I'm Abraham Lincoln, one of the presidents of the United States of America. Goodbye from Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, 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 please save it. Uh, I have a weak finish. <laughs> uh, that, my friends, was a laugh. You don't hear that much anymore. Yeah, live comedy used to be big. But the iProd almost killed the laughter forever. But now, brought to you by Disney Imagineering, we will bring back the chortles, the guffaws, and all of that. But first, we must remember what comedy was. Comedy was making fun of everyday things that happened to all of us, of flying in an airplane, that people different than us are wrong and should be laughed at. Sometimes, comedy was based on a bad experience, like being pulled over by what used to be called a cop. Do you know how fast you were going? No, I, I do not know. Why don't you tell me? <laughs> comedy was doing a parody or a takeoff of a well-known song. Yesterday was only 24 hours ago from today. And let us not forget that comedy was also inappropriate noises. <laughs> huh, sorry, I, I guess I shouldn't have had that burrito today. Comedy was many things, and Disney will help bring it all back. We will all remember how to laugh again. <laughs> or else. <laughs> well, I have to go, but before I go, remember, if everyone else is laughing, it must be funny. If only you are laughing, you are crazy and will be put into a small box. You've been a swell crowd. <clears throat> Good night.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's get the uh, talk show going. I'm going to put this over here, I guess. Well, that's the show. Thanks for coming. Um, it's my pleasure to work, uh, welcome. We have no desk bit like a talk show would have, but um, it's my pleasure. Also, we're using the, um, the mic from uh, Match Game. <laughs> Nobody. Okay, good. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, okay, I'm not going to. Did that help? Thank you. Um, our first guest, um, you may know her. She's a, um, an artist in the best sense. Um, she takes a lot of great photographs, and I'm stalling so I can read the intro. Um, she's, uh, she's come here all the way from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, um, and she wrote here on the back of her border collie, Lolly. Uh, Lindsay White's an artist and a professor at the San Francisco Art Institute, and one of my best buddies after this whole big art show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Lindsay White! Lindsay! <laughs> Oh, Lindsay, hello. Uh, she goes nowhere without her ficus. You're moving the couch again. Welcome. Thank please, you. Please sit down before the applause stops. <laughs> um, hi, what's going on? I've always wanted to be on your show. Well, here you go. This is the show. Um, my talk show runs probably once every 10 years. We do a talk show. And <laughs> don't try to figure that out. Um, well, welcome. Um, I uh, know a lot about you. I've worked with you. Uh, you took pictures of me that somehow became a gigantic exhibit in a pretty great museum. Um, how do you account for that? I don't know. OK, good answer. <laughs> Um, now, I said to you this, this to you once before, and I said, do you always work in black and white? And you said, no, they're color. <laughs> what did you mean by that? Um, <laughs> most of the images are color in the, out there in the, in the hallway. They're a very deceiving form of color. It's true. They're color surrounded in a large field of black. That could be deceiving. As I'm asking this question, I realize I wore white and black the whole time. That has a lot to do with it, doesn't it? Sure. All right, we're going to open it up to, uh, <laughs> no, we're not opening it up. Um, let's see if I have anything in, down here that I, ow! <laughs> um, my question uh, is, um, is the camera that you have like gigantic? I mean, how are those pictures? <laughs> how are those pictures taken? Were you there when I took the pictures? Not completely. Sure. Yeah, I was there. It was me, I guess. That was actually my look-alike robot that I send out to have pictures taken for me. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we basically spent three days in a studio, right? In sure. LA, taking pictures, doing a whole bunch of stuff. It was a room with no windows. A room with no windows, <laughs> which made us work even harder. It's true. And there was a guy in the next room over making fake champagne. That's right. He was fooling people with the champagne that he made. And he would put, and we had a box of Alka Seltzer, like a big case of Alka Seltzer. And I went, So is it that acidic that you have to give this out at the party as well? And he said, No, that's what causes the bubbles. <laughs> that tells you how good the champagne must have been, the, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they served it at a fancy art event. That's what happens. It's artisan champagne, right? <laughs> it's, it's artisan, right. definitely. And that means it doesn't have to be good. It just has to have an art form to it, right? If you say that's so. not what it means. That's not, I, know, I know what artisan <laughs> means. I don't want people to think I'm ignorant. What does it mean? Exactly what you said. Okay. Anything you'd like to talk about? Um, Let's bring Lily. Is photography in. your favorite? No, no. 
<laughs> no, you've got to get used to this. You're going to be on talk shows all the time after this exhibit. Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, we could bring her up, but let's not even bother. <laughs> She's killing me right now in the back. What are you doing? She's not. She actually, she, I saw her wave. I think she threw a fist up. Oh, just now? Oh, she's doing this. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Lily before she gets here. So if it wasn't for Lily, this show wouldn't have happened, right? What made you choose me? Maybe that's a good question. Don't take my question. <laughs> I don't hear that little voice, do you? No. Is that, that so must tiny, be in your so head. So I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't hear anything. Must be a voice in your head. Um, um, let's bring her up because she's going to be mad if I ask you anything that she wants me to ask her. Well, she has this piece of paper here. Oh, really? Ron. Roll it into a ball, throw it away. <laughs> now she's Ro getting angry. I feel it. Ron. Let's bring her up. <laughs> Unless what you have was something your, there. I can't read her handwriting. <laughs> Are you going to ask me the questions that she would have asked me? I'll ask in her voice. Okay. That'll, that'll go over well. <laughs> Ron! <laughs> Ron, exactly what was it. your <laughs> something thought when? <laughs> hmm. Well, I can't answer that because it's not a complete question. <laughs> but I'll answer in her voice, too. Well, <laughs> let me tell you. Let's bring her up. Um, for, no, not yet. No, no. I have to do the intro. It's a talk show. Lily, don't sit. What are you doing? Lily Siegel, who will be sitting here soon, is the associate curator at the Contemporary Jewish Museum in San Francisco. Um, you know this is Seattle, right? Um, could we get the right city on there? Okay, good. There we go. There we, wait. No, that's India. It's all timing, everybody. It's all timing and doing things that, all right. Um, I have a bad Polish joke. Ask me what I do for a living, and then what's the most important thing about it? I'm a Polish comedian. Timing. Thank you, Jerry Lewis. So, Lily, why don't you come up here now? You are here. <laughs> and Hello. give credit, you'll see them online. Okay. Um, so, Lily, thanks yes. for having us. Thanks for having us do a show here. Um, it's a little odd for me, especially when I came here Wednesday when the museum is closed, um, and everybody that worked here, I'd be walking around, and they would, go, they would just suddenly see me and go, oh. Um, because they somehow saw my face way too much. And I do too. Um, so how long have you been curator here? I don't know. I didn't prepare answers, just questions. Oh, just questions. You don't know oh, how long you've been here? <laughs> it's a blur. <laughs> I've been here a year. Well, maybe you should be sitting here asking the questions. Do you want to do that? Should I? <laughs> I think you should. I'm going to get up and you're going to sit here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of done now. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Can you get a softer couch? <laughs> Let's get serious. Yeah. Use one of these. Hello? <laughs> Sorry. Ron, Lindsay, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Lily. Oh, you're, wel <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the beautiful exhibition. It's really fantastic. <laughs> oh, thanks. She knows how to get applause. <laughs> Good work. Thank you. Yeah. Um, had you ever heard the word Havruta before I contacted you out of the blue? Um, no, I, I mean, there's a candy that has that name, right? Hanuta, that's Hanuta. Oh, okay. It's a German candy, it's really great. It's yeah. a good candy. 
It's one of my favorites. I've never but before heard of that, it. Oh, no, no, I guess not. It's a wafer with uh, hazelnut Nutella. Oh, sounds good. Pretty good. It's good. <laughs> um, so what did you think? I said, you want to do the sabruta? And you said, yes. <laughs> and then she asked me, and I said, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I didn't. Right. Oh, that's not right. I said yes immediately because it sounded interesting. I love doing anything, any new thing, kind of. So I wasn't there when Lindsay approached you, Ron. What it, how did she propose the project? What were your first thoughts? Um, she just paid me off. <laughs> no, she sent me an email asking, uh, describing the project. And um, it sounded very really interesting. And I didn't know really, know Lindsay before that. And it was really well written. It was really only like one paragraph. And I thought about it for maybe 10 minutes, right? I wrote you back almost immediately. I think, I don't remember. Took two days. <laughs> For me, that's immediately. Now I know this, it's true. <laughs> it's more like a week. Yeah. But yeah. So, Lindsay wrote, you said yes. Well, first I wrote to Lindsay. She said, let me think about it. She wasn't any faster than you were. Um, she said yes, you said yes. I think Lindsay went down to LA and you met on a street corner or something. Yeah, we didn't know what each other looked like and so we were both <laughs> just yelling out our names. Um, so what happened after that? You went gone. into the studio. <laughs> we went into the studio, right. And I think the first picture that Lindsay took was the first picture in the exhibition. It's crazy. You your... And that, that frog hat was given to me by a, a friend, Paul Kozlowski, who had moved out of LA and I didn't want any of his stuff except for that hat. And he said, here, take this. And I said, all right. And um, just with throwing on hats, and I think it was it the first picture? It yep. was close to the first picture. That was picture. the last picture of the first day. Close. Oh. The first one was your back <laughs> well, to the camera. Oh, is that, oh, the first picture out here. It was from the first series of shooting. Right. Because it was uncomfortable, and then you told me to stop acting weird. That's what you I said was I was being at. really uptight. <laughs> I did? You did. You said you're being a little uptight. Tell me. And it would, it, you know. You said oh, you, because you weren't, you weren't telling me what to do. I think that was part of it. <laughs> I just needed you to tell me what to do and, you know, put me in certain positions. And but that's not collaboration. So in the end, I'm you leaving. guys figured out how to work together. Oh, and yeah. I'm just talking melted. about the first, like, five minutes. <laughs> We no, had, really, yeah, it wound up being a very comfortable situation. Oh, oh. Till oh. now. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. So you started collaborating, you hung out for a few days. When did it really click? I think it clicked. <laughs> oh, nothing, sorry. <laughs> you at the tree. Yeah, you answer that. Um, I felt like we hit it off, off the bat. I didn't feel un ever, un I never felt uncomfortable asking you lots of questions, and you always called me on things. Where I did a lot of research, and finally you were like, "I know you know the answer to the question you're asking me." And so, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that joking. was never asked. <laughs> she knows better. It's true. You I are never, from Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Ageless. <laughs> but no, we, uh, we hit it off, and it, there wasn't, I think uh, it was just, there was sitting and hanging out, having a conversation for a week. I think we talked for about four hours when we first met, and I asked you lots of questions. Uh -huh. And then we followed up and had coffee again, and, and Ron let me pick his brain some more about just of... Uh, his interest in comedy and where he studied and um, also that he was offered a, to be a head of a comedy department, which was amazing. And then, but what is that? What I does that mean? Tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, I just, I taught at Emerson College for a year and then after that year, they wanted me to 
be like in charge of this comedy department, but I, be, I was trying to leave Boston for probably two and a half years at that point. And um, I actually said no. I just went, no, I can't, <laughs> I, wanna, I gotta get out of here. And they couldn't believe that I wasn't taking that job. But I, um, that's one of those things where I could see down the road that I would still be teaching there. And I wouldn't be performing that much. And that really, it was kind of a tough decision, but I really wanted to get out of there and perform in other places. So I think I made the right choice. I wouldn't be here. Yeah, we're glad you mm. made that choice. <laughs> oh, so thank you. You've both worked with lots of other people, but mostly within your own genres. What was it like to work with someone, Ron, an artist for you, Lindsay, a performer? You're a performer? <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, My apologies. <laughs> what was it like? Yeah, D did it change the way that you're going to approach your own art form in the future? Maybe. I'm sure it influenced me in some way. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I'm not aware of anything, though. I'm not really aware of what happened. Um, <laughs> it was. Um, it was a lot of photographs. I mean, it was a lot of picture taking. And we kind of just kind of had fun doing it, you know. It was uh, it was pretty fun doing it, right? Yes. <laughs> we had a list. We had a list going that we would every day. We would kind of well, that was sort of my thing. Where I right. felt like we had to organize ourselves. <laughs> but there were there were different objectives for each day, even if it was just the list said frog head, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or twirling trash bags, or I don't know. Hands, or you know, there was there was an abstract <laughs> list. My hand model's laughing in the front row. <laughs> my, we spent my, what three hours making casts of my hand, and they didn't show up in the. I'm sorry. They, they're not. That's that's part two. That's the sequel. That is the sequel. Yes. Is just the hands. I, cool. I think the the most exciting part about working with Ron was that I could, when I was photographing him, I could see him change into characters before my eyes and I had never experienced anything like that before to when you would be like hold on and then you would become that person um, I'm not I'm not used to witnessing something like that that sort of <laughs> trance but like within like five feet of taking a picture and then you would go into this character and then we would you know like oh move this way do that or add add this prop or that but you were always in character wow I didn't know that yeah, whenever, <laughs> whenever I took pictures of you as the animatronic comic, you, that was one where you were like, oh, hold on. You know, I'm not even going to try because you do it so well. Wow, that's a great impression. <laughs> 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 but you would have to do a series of motions to become that person. And that really gave me some insight into how physical the, the whole performance is. Hmm. It was fun. <laughs> um. One of my favorite, do you have? No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One of my favorite works, the photograph of Ron turning into the puddle, comedian puddle, I think is a really strong work and really shows exactly what your project together was about. And incidentally, Lindsay said that's when Ron, you expressed that you really felt like you were collaborating. Like, this is it, we got it. But I think I interviewed Lindsay before, and we were talking about the difference between photography that is supposed to be true, that no one believes it anymore, and performance that we all know to be untrue. Right, a complete lie. Right. So <laughs> in this puddle image, we actually believe that you are turning into an ink blob. But if we look closely, the photograph is what tells the truth. We can see the outline of your body beneath the magic, mm. whatever it is. I'm not going to give away your secrets. Um, right. But I'm curious why that moment was so profound for the two of you. And <laughs> I don't know. We went back and forth on it, on, on how I should lay down or how the thing should be. and. Um... I mean, that whole, that photograph took a while to set up and things. Um, 
but they're really once once you get to that point um, and the art of it is the fact that once the photograph's taken it looks like a melting kind of you know um, but I'm not gonna get philosophical about it whose idea was it oh it's definitely Lindsay's <laughs> idea um, she brought black cloth I think we had a lot of black cloth that we cut up for a few things um, Right? You had a lot of black cloth with you. Yes. <laughs> I did. Please don't elaborate. <laughs> no, I, I brought a lot of, the, the cloth was sort of the theatrical tie, I guess, or the darkness and being able to transform Ron into different characters or with the, with the frog or the lily pad hat, being able to just wrap him up in cloth and photograph him or, or turn the cloth into a puddle or you know, or have him levitating. Everything was very lo-fi, which is always important to me, is it's always hands-on and that I'm building everything that we're doing and it's not a Photoshop gag. But Ron, with the levitating, he said that he's always wanted to do that act on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see it. I mean, I always want... <laughs> Funny you should ask. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um... I want to. I want to actually levitate somebody. That would be pretty fun. That would be cool. Um, not tonight. It's not We're that out hard. of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, one final question for Lindsay: How do you spell ficus? F I C U S. Right. Right. No. You have yeah. to, and then you say ficus again. Ficus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to you both. It's Thank a you. beautiful show. Thanks. <laughs>